सो हेलो फ्रेंड्स वेलकम टू माई चैनल लेट स्टडी लाइफ आई हैव ओपन दिस चैनल रिसेंटली इन ऑर्डर टू इम्पार्ट नॉलेज रिगार्डिंग बायोलॉजी क्लास इलेवन एंड ट्वेल्व सो आई हैव अ प्लान एट फर्स्ट आई विल स्टार्ट विथ क्लास ट्वेल्व एंड आफ्टर आई कम्प्लीट द कोर्स आई विल स्टार्ट विथ क्लास इलेवन बिकॉज फॉर मी क्लास ट्वेल्व इज मोर इम्पॉर्टेंट सो विदाउट वेस्टिंग अ सिंगल मिनट लेट स्टार्ट अवर क्लास I hope you will enjoy the class in Let's Study Life. I have given this name because biology is related to life. So let's study. We will start with the first chapter. The name of the first chapter is Reproduction in Organisms. It is the first chapter of a biology book. So <clears throat> I have a request. When you are watching the videos, you will pick your book and open it and just match it what I am teaching and what is written in the book. or you can do one more thing after watching my video you can go and study the uh, book so it's up to you what you will do okay so let's study with the first chapter um so first chapter the page number is 3 you will go on page number 3 and you will see the first term given there is life span what is life span okay actually what does life span means the period from birth till the natural death of an organism is called life span it's very simple so after a person take birth from that period till a person survive like man is mortal so up till that period when the man will die that total period like uh, suppose my grandfather or my grandmother he or she live up till 60 year that 60 years will be termed as life span of that individual okay so it's very simple first page i don't think anything is else is there important so next page 4 page number 4 only pictures are given page number 5 we will start our main chapter and topic of discussion so it's what is reproduction very easy like everybody knows the biological process through which an organism give rise to the offspring similar to itself is known as reproduction so um it's a kind of phenomena which help in continuity of the species like the term reproduction we are studying from class 6 or 7 onward and the same definition is going on from 6 7 8 9 10 11 12 but how can you modify this def definition in a better way reproduction is that phenomena which help in continuity of the species like if there will be no reproduction we can't continue the race of that we can't continue the species the species will stop there and it will get on extinct it will extinct so for so that the species doesn't get extinct what we should do we should reproduce but overproduction is not good because nature always check overproduction because nature is superior to us we will study this concept in a um what you know better way in chapter number 7 that will be evolution okay so now we all know that there are two main type of reproduction asexual and sexual i don't think that i have to speak about the differences because everybody knows that so let's start another topic that is the biological importance of reproduction what is the biological importance of reproduction see reproduction is that phenomena which will help us to continue which will help us to continue the species continue the um continuity of the species okay so that is one of the important you can say another is due to sexual reproduction variation occurs now what is variation the difference is in individual okay i am different my capability or capacity to um, resist a germ to enter in my body is different from that of a child or from that of a um, old aged person so all these things there is differences is termed as variation and for this variation we are different every person has certain capacity to cope up with the environment and if he doesn't cope up with the environment then environment will eliminate us but due to sexual reproduction variation occur and in sexual reproduction most probably the favorable variation occur and favorable variation are selected by the nature so what happens it is essential for evolution if we don't evolve and if we stay in one place only then human beings would not have formed like homo sapiens would not have formed for of our forming homo sapiens ramapithecus australopithecus homo habilis all this have to pass certain period of time to evolve themselves so evolving is very important that is possible only due to sexual reproduction 
let's move on to our next topic that is asexual reproduction asexual reproduction is that type of reproduction where gametes are not included and it doesn't include fertilization even okay so the first term you're getting in page number five is clone okay what is clone 1.1 you get and check that okay clone clone is described as those individuals which are morphologically and genetically similar to their parental species let's see uh let us take an example okay um let me take an example suppose this is a parent okay this is a parent species this is example don't take it seriously it's a parent species and it's a daughter or son okay both these are similar okay both these are similar they are similar from outer appearance like from outer phenotype their phenotype is similar okay and they don't have genetic combination but let us consider it is a living being they are genetically also similar so what is the fact we're getting at this two are similar from genetically as well as from phenotypically so what can you conclude that they are clone they are termed as clone so clone is that group of organism which are morphologically and genetically similar to their parental species now how can it be possible it can be possible only through asexual reproduction through sexual reproduction we can't get our species which can be similar to their parents okay it's quite impossible okay um i hope it is finished here okay let's start now some of the extra topics okay significance of asexual reproduction i, I know that um sexual reproduction is the best reproduction in the world okay but what is the significance of asexual reproduction how can you say that okay so first of all is that it's a uniparental system on the single parent is involved for production of large number of individual on the single parent it doesn't need any um like involvement of two parents okay the organism or the species which are produced attain maturity within a short period of time within a short period like two days or two weeks maybe like that time it will attain maturity at a high level the offspring are genetically similar to their parents like parents can easily identify that all these are my offspring okay uh, a single parent can produce a large number of offspring single parent it can produce thousands of thousands of individuals at a time that is the most important uh, significance but if it come like if it exam it come that state the um, that which of the um, reproduction is best or better suited with the environment you have tried asexual because sexual is not environmental uh, friendly environment favors as uh, sexual reproduction okay so okay let's go to the next topic um like what are the mode of reproduction in certain organisms yeast okay yeast it they produce reproduces by budding amoeba by fission hydra by budding and sponges by gemule you have to see all this thing i have to just learn it in your in your book it is given because it is it is had it has not been given in a brief way so i would not explain anything in brief when you go in higher classes you will start, uh, like you will see that one all this reproductive parts okay all these are reproductive parts now another topic you just go and see in your book okay how does yeast reproduce asexually okay so yeast reproduces through budding we all know that okay so um under favorable condition when they get the favorable condition they reproduce by budding but under unfavorable condition they reproduce by fission okay this is the main difference you have uh, like tricky question which can be tricked in your um, exams how does yeast reproduce asexually for two marks it may be given so yeast reproduce by budding when it get the favorable condition we also have we get favorable condition in summer and in winter most people do not get favorable condition they don't like winter okay that is the called favorable and unfavorable condition so in favorable condition that um yeast reproduces through budding but when it get unfavorable condition it reproduces by fission it's their own mechanism to do that because they can't they are not adaptive okay they are not adaptive and at the same time they are not as much as uh, capable like the human beings okay or the other mammals 
Now let's study about zoo sports. What are zoo sports? Okay. Zoo sports are thin walled. Their wall is thin, motile. Like they are movable. They can move from one place to another place. Movable. Asexual reproductive units. They are the asexual reproductive units. Small uh, reproductive units. Okay. Asexual reproductive units of certain algae and fungi. Aquatic fungi we can say. I think you have understood this because it's not complex. Okay. They are thin walled. First of first important character is thin walled. Their wall is thin. They are, they are <coughs> motile. They can move. Next is their asexual reproductive units. What is the asexual? If somebody asks you what is the asexual reproductive units of potato, you have to say tuber. That's a, I, will, I am coming in this topic to sweat. Or what is the um, reproductive unit of yeast? You have to say budding or bud. Not budding, bud. Okay, that is a fact. So, I hope you have understood this. So, let's start our next topic. That is vegetative propagation. What is vegetative propagation? We are learning this topic from class 6 onwards. Okay, vegetative propagation is the phenomena in which the vegetative portion of the plant give rise to a new individual. Okay, every plant has a vegetative portion. Like potato has tuber. Um, then, oxalis has runners then uh, ginger has rhizome all these are the reproductive asexual reproductive units of um, plants or we can say vegetative propagules what is vegetative propagules vegetative propagules are those asexual units through which plants can reproduce through which plants can reproduce and give rise to their young ones so i hope you understand that vegetative propagation is a process by which formation of new plant takes place through the vegetative portion of the plants like leaf bud of bryophyllum runner of oxalis potato a tuber of potato rhizome of ginger all these things are the vegetative propagation of the oh sorry all these are known as vegetative propagation of uh, plant okay i think up till this it's nothing is really confusing okay let's start with our actually this chapter is very easy it's the first chapter so let's start with our next page page number eight okay let's start uh, page number eight here it's uh, one of the most important information is given one plant is there water hyacinth okay water hyacinth that is uh, the scientific name is um, Ecornia crassipes okay Ecornia crassipes this is the plant which is introduced in India from other place. Like it's not a native species. It was a spe exotic species. Okay. It has been introduced in India from other places in order to reduce water pollution. But it creates a problem to our society. It is known as Terror of Bengal. Terror of Bengal. It was introduced in West Bengal water in order to reduce water pollution. It has reduced water pollution to a great extent. But on the other hand, it creates problems. It has like uh, killed all the aquatic plants and animals living there. And now it is also known as Terror of Asham because the weeds, that water hyacinth, it is coming towards Asham at the same time. Okay, that is the one of the important information you are getting, water hyacinth in page number 8. Okay, uh, so here no more questions we are getting. Let's start 1.2. Okay, sexual reproduction. So, his sexual reproduction, we, we all know that in sexual reproduction, we are getting fertilization, okay. Fertilization means the fusion of male and female gamete for the production of zygote, okay. That is, it is the most important thing in sexual reproduction. It is a critical phase, okay. Critical phase, okay. So, let's start. Um, the first term you are getting in 1.2 is juvenile phase. What is juvenile phase? Juvenile phase is that phase that occurs in an organism before the sexual maturity. A person until and unless he reaches the sexual maturity, it is known as juvenile phase. A child of seven or eight years cannot be said to uh, like can be said to be in juvenile phase. But me or others, teenagers, we can't say that they are in juvenile phase. They have crossed the juvenile phase and they have reached maturity in they are in adolescence phase. Okay. So, juvenile phase is easy. A person before reaching to the reproductive phase or a person until and unless he reaches to the reproductive phase is known as juvenile phase. It is known as vegetative phase in plants. Plants should also have certain phase. So, it is known as vegetative phase. 
let's start uh, the next topic okay just wait for two minutes, uh, one minute yeah now we will know flowering of plants okay monocarpic and polycarpic what is monocarpic monocarpic are those plants which flowers once in their lifetime there are certain flowers which will flower only once in their life entire lifetime like bamboo bamboo flowers once in lifetime generally uh, after 50 to 100 years 50 to 100 years it takes to get a flower it's very lucky if you can see the flower of a bamboo i have never seen <laughs> okay um let's is nil kuranji it's found i think in karnataka or tamil nadu i don't know actually i think in karnataka i think nil kuranji uh wait let me see yeah it in hilly areas of kerala karnataka and tamil nadu okay in those places you will get that nil kuranji it flowers once in 12 years and when it flowers the entire valley the entire hillside it looks amazing totally amazing enchanting it, it 12 years so last it was in 2018 next it will be in 2030 the people who are really interested you can go and watch that one it is very nice it's very beautiful okay and the scientific name of nail kuranji is strobilanthus kunthiana strobilanthus kunthiana okay it is given in page number nine now we are getting two cycles okay uh, we are getting two cycles that is extra cycle and menstrual cycle what is extra cycle the period of reproductive activity in a non-primate animals or uh, mammals is known as reproductive uh, sorry extra cycle what is extra cycle the period of reproductive activity the period when the reproductive activity sexual urge is at a high peak in the non-primate animals it is known as extra cycle like in cow dog like when they're reproducing they're they become mad okay for sexual need so at the time you should not disturb them okay that is a fact that is known as extra cycle and menstrual cycle everyone knows it's common in monkeys apes and humans the periodic a discharge of blood when the lining of the um, endometrium becomes thinner and it's break along with the discharge of blood okay you all know this we will discuss in a, a broad manner in chapter number three that is the production in human beings okay so to page number nine also get ended here let's move on to page number 10 here we have um Another term is that seasonal breeders. On the first line, you are getting seasonal breeder. Okay, seasonal breeder. The animals which breed only in a particular season, like frog. Okay, frog is a species which will breed only in a particular season. The animal which breed only during a particular time in the year. In the entire year, it gets only a particular time to breed. That animal is known as that. Uh, that process or that animals are known as seasonal breeders. Or seasonal breeding process is seasonal breeding and the animals are known as seasonal breeders like only in a particular time in summer either in winter at that moment they will reproduce or they will produce the young ones like frog like then we will come to uh, next topic gametogenesis 1.2.1.1 1.2.1.1 okay gametogenesis what is gametogenesis the formation of male gamete and the female gamete in any organism is known as gametogenesis. Very easy. <coughs> in uh, human beings, we have uh, male sperms and a human ovum. Okay. Now, there are three types of such gametogenesis. Okay. Or formation of gametes. Homogametes. Heterogametes. And uh, oogametes. Homogametes, we can also term this as isogametes, heterogamete as an isogametes. Okay, now what are these terms mean actually? Homogametes, like see, when the two fusing gametes cannot be categorized as male and female by observation, that is known as homogametes. Like they are similar. Clone, we have so clone. Let us take again the example of the pain gaps. This is male gametes. This is female gamete. Can you identify? No. By observation, we cannot identify that this is male gamete or this is female gamete. So that is what we call as um, homo 
gametes or isogametes. When the fusing gametes, when the two fusing gametes cannot be identified as male and female gamete, then those gametes are known as homogametes or isogametes. And the process when those when those type of uh, gametes will fuse together, that process is known as homogamy or isogamy. Okay. Example cladophora. Okay. Next is come heterogametes. Now I think you can understand what is heterogametes. So when the two fusing gametes are dissimilar in appearance and can be identified as male and female, that is known as heterogametes. Like male gamete and female gamete. When they will fuse. It's identifiable now. That is a thing. And oogam. Oh, sorry. An isogametes example is ficus. Okay, ficus. And uh, now oogametes. It's in case of human beings only. Oogametes. When the male gamete is motile, and the female gamete is non-motile. And female gamete is produced in a smaller quantity, and male gamete is produced in larger quantity. Then that type of gamete production is known as Oogametes and the process is known as oogamy. Now the thing is that why male sperms are produced in a large number while female gametes are produced only in a single or two numbers. Why? What is the fact behind that? Now see, the sperms. A male produces a large number of around crores of sperms. The fact is that all the sperms cannot reach to the female ovum to fertilize it. For fertilization, the sperm must reach to the ovum, but it doesn't reach. So that's why sperms are produced in large number. The fact is that um, some sperms are unhealthy, so it can't reach. Some sperms get like they are destroyed. They doesn't reach up to that their platform, their destination. So it is produced in large number, so that if their number get reduced, at least one sperm get reach to the ovum for fertilization okay so next topic is um, let's see okay next topic we will move on to our next video because you might feel bored because I don't know it's my new channel so if you like the video put a like symbol don't forget to subscribe it share it as much as possible and join our friends and Comment me that how have you experienced it with your video or uh, like if you have liked this video what are the possibilities to make this video more nice and the thing is that if you have not understood anything please let me know in the comment box and also uh, comment me about the speed like how it's going I should go slow or I should go faster comment me. Thank you for watching the video.